mail back time. I've got loads of stuff here. I think I've got 12 packages, some of like that. So let's get into it and see what we've got. There are links down below for these items too, if there's anything you're interested in. As always, Ooh, I think I know what this is. I think this is a review item. It's an Infini Ray Night Vision Go. Let's actually open the packaging up. But I think this is a review item. I'm pretty sure. Nice packaging. It's a USB-C thermal camera. That looks really nice. So I'll be doing a review on this, like I said. Um, so I'll be doing a full video on this. A box with some bits in it. But let's have a quick look to see what actually comes with it. So there'll be links down below for this from the suppliers. I think much. There'll be links down below, like I said. So you've got a USB-C extension cable, because that's an extension, so you can actually just plug it in that way. Chinese manual, that side. English manual, that side. So pixel size 12 micrometers, 256 by 192 resolution, covers minus 20 degrees C to plus 150 degrees C, which is good for electronics, that's a good range for that. So we'll see. Frame rate 25 hertz, which is really good. If that's a thermal frame rate, I'm not sure, but it says it is, but we'll see. Maybe it's just a video frame rate. Doesn't mention the focal distance, but maybe that's not so critical. Maybe it's to do with lensing. Anyway, we'll find out. It's a little bag to put in too, nice. So make sure you subscribe and check out that review video when I do that, which won't be too far away. The problem with doing mailbag videos at the moment is that I'm so far ahead with mailbag videos. I'm just weeks ahead. So I'm actually having to keep juggling things around. Oh, there's something else in here too. A cleaning cloth. I'm going to keep juggling things around to try and get everything in sequence so my reviews come after the mailbags. But when I'm, I've got five weeks worth of mailbags already recorded, it's a bit hard sometimes. Anyway. So make sure to subscribe and check out my review playlist. Because this will appear there. Lovely. I'm looking forward to playing with that. It's nice and compact. It's impressive. Lots of tape. Oh, I have to use a real knife. Sacrilege. So thick. Wow. Ah, excellent. Excellent. No, I don't have really small hands. <laughs> These look a lot like traditional automotive relays in a form factor. <laughs> anyway, um, these are high current relays. 24 volt, 100 amp. 12 volt, 100 amp. 24 volt, 100 amp again. I have mentioned before my motorhome. I had an electrical issue in there where I had an overload of blood fuse and I, I told you how I was going to modify that circuitry. I don't know if I'll do a video on that. I don't know. Maybe I will. I might do. It's not exactly easy to video though. So the idea of that is that it has a big relay in there which switches the two batteries together. So you've got the house battery which does all the main electrics in the motorhome and you've got the vehicle batteries like the starting battery you know runs all the normal vehicle electrics. When the engine is running it links the two batteries together to charge the house batteries off the alternator. It's just like a backup system because the thing uses solar anyway so it's got a lot of solar power on the roof and that have you and that does a lot of that but that is just there to charge up whilst driving and whatever you know. So you know, I do a lot of driving at night in that thing. So whilst you're driving, keeping it charged up is good. But because it's linking two batteries together through a system which is basically very high current, it can potentially cause problems. So I've mentioned before in another video about putting a resistor in between the two, which is one of the modifications you're going to be doing to help reduce the current that's available to the second battery or battery bank. My main relay, which was doing that switching, which it's all, it's all failed at the same time. So I had fuses pop, I had wiring burn out, and the relay burnt out. So I need to replace the relay. And I was actually using a double pole relay. I was thinking to myself, well, don't you need to use a double pole relay? It's quite big, it's quite physically large as well. And a 100 amp relay is still way more than the amount of power I'm trying to switch. I should be doing, you know, 40 amps max. Absolute max is 40 amps. And it should be generally lower than that, yeah. Relays, big chunking relays. Spudges, which have pierced the bag.
Yeah, it's fairly thick actually, fairly thick spudges. Um, I think it refers to as crowbars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are fairly thick, so quite robust ones. It's got a nice little, like a knife tip on this one. So, but these are pretty robust ones, pretty thick ones. So these will, these will probably have a place in certain tasks where a thin spudger such as this really isn't up to it. I mean, I use this a lot, and I've bent these so many times. I just bend a lot. You can see it's actually got to be with this in it because they bend and I straighten them up again because they're quite thin. But these aren't particularly strong. Which is why I've got these, because sometimes you want something a bit more robust, and these will do the job, I think. Ah, neons. Excellent. These took ages to arrive. It's been three months, maybe longer. It's been ages. I actually got these because one of the bits of Tesco I repaired oh, a little while ago now, it had blown neons in it. Well, neon was really dim, you could barely see it. It's basically all like. Um, I don't know, tinted on the actual glass because it had been failing. So I've got some neons. It says five millimeters, but I don't remember what the voltage rating and stuff like that was on these things. They do vary a little bit, but I think it was the HP. What was it? It was an HP meter I did not long ago. I can't remember the number now. There's a voltmeter of some kind. AC voltmeter, HP 400A. Was that it? I think it was HP 400A. And it's the power uh, indicator, which is the neon, um, that was blown. Or well, at least really dim, you could barely see it. So, ordered neons to replace that, because I didn't actually have any neons. Um, there's been a few times I wish I had them, and I didn't have any, so now I've got some neons. If you like my bag videos or the things I'm showing you, don't forget to click the like. What's this? Oh, these are arrived really fast, actually. Those are months. This is a week or two. <laughs> I think it's about a week. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'll get one out so you can see it a little bit easier. There you go. It's just a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack. So it's like a switching jack. And it's basically got switching built into it as well, so you can use it for diverting signals. I use these in some of my projects, and they're really handy because I've got a footprint for it and everything like that. I'll just make a PCB, and it's got the right footprint, and I'm just drop these on the board, and I've got a socket. The only thing you need to watch out for in these particular ones is that the actual profile is really low. It's got quite a large plug body. So you obviously got the 3.5 millimeter plug part, but then you've got the body around that plug, you know, the wiring attached to it and everything. That's going to be quite large, and sometimes, because this is a low profile, if this is flush on the circuit board, you have to be careful about that. Um, like when I actually use these in my projects, because I've the way I've had designed it, I actually had to tip this off the board slightly like this to create a bit of clearance for the plug to go onto the actual socket. But that's just because I wanted this type. But yeah, anyway, cheap, easy to get, nice. Resistors, what are these? 0.5R, so it's half an ohm, and 0.56. I don't remember why I purchased these resistors now. I've actually completely forgotten why. I got them for a reason, I don't remember what it was. <laughs> was it to modify something? I don't remember. I've... It will come to me one day. Okay, nothing too exciting. Just a BNC cable, 50 ohms hopefully. It should be 50 ohms, that's what I ordered. IG58 coaxial cable, so that's 50 ohms. This is a slightly longer cable, I think it was about two meters or something like that, instead of one meter. It's got this, let's do this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh no, now I've ruined it. No. Oh. Yes, this is just standard coax. It's quite stiff actually. Is that solid core? Maybe it is solid core. It feels quite stiff. It's probably about one half meters actually. It's probably one half meters coax. So I got this because often when I'm working on this bench here, I might need to hook up a piece of test gear here, which I'm repairing or working on, and I need to hook up these to something else, like maybe a signal generator or something like that, or maybe my RF generator up here or something like that, or my spectrum analyzer. And having a longer cable means it can reach a bit more easily without me having to mess around or try and move things to get it to, to actually reach the thing. So, yeah, just a longer cable. I think that's fine. This also took a very long time to arrive. 
I saw this, I think, on someone else's channel or something like this, or at least to get got the idea from somebody else's channel. I can't think who it was because it's months ago now. I even purchased these and then later on I thought to myself, why did I buy these? Because I don't actually remember why I bought them. It makes total sense when I do remember why I bought them. And I've kind of got it stuck in my head now about why. So these are basically little brushes and little needles. These are for cleaning internal walls or things. So an example of this could be one of these. So if you've got one of these banana jacks, you probably want to get one of these, which fits, I don't know what size it will be, maybe that one. And you can use this to clean the inside with a bit of, you know, deoxid or some of that. You can even brush it and clean the inside of the connections up. This is why I've got these. So this is actually two sets. So you've got the actual brushes on one set, and you've got these abrasive, I suppose, metal shafts, which are basically just twisted metal together. So if you do want to do an internal ball which is too small for a brush, you could use one of these and use that to scrape instead. But yeah, this would be good. Another example is like old Tesky I work on. Often be, the BNC is a bit corroded and that sort of stuff. And they are female sockets. So in that case, I could probably find one of these which kind of fits, which one's closest, and then shove some dioxide in there and give it a scrape with this to try and clean up any internal oxidisation inside the BNC. Need tools for the job. I mean, recently when I was working on the Heathkit IT28, I had bombs with the banana jacks on that being corroded and dirty inside, you know, because of old aluminium fittings. I had to clean those up, and it wasn't easy to clean. So having these then would have been good. There's actually one of the reasons I bought the things. A box here. Ah, oh, that was fast. <laughs> Okay, I saw this on a live stream recently with um, Brian Locke and Bit Looney. They were hanging out together at Brian's place. And they did some live streams and I had some panels. Yeah, a bit bent over at the ends here. But yeah, that is LED panels and I thought those look pretty cool. 5 volt ground, data out. 5 volt ground in the centre, 5 volt ground, data in over here. So you can daisy chain them if you want. These are really thin, I thought it would be thicker panels than this. It's a bit, say, warped in the ends, hopefully it doesn't matter. So you can actually just run these things off an Arduino or ESP32 or some other microcontroller, send it serial data and it's data change it through the actual matrix. I'm not quite sure the orientation of the matrix. I can't tell yet from this where the data is coming in. Obviously it comes in this side and goes out that side, but data in comes to over here. I'm trying to follow it comes down to over here somewhere goes to there goes to that point there the data in comes to this LED here so I'm guessing that's top left there and it goes yeah I can see a, a chain here so it goes to here and it's in columns in this orientation so it does columns like this and if you know which what your layout is on your LEDs then you can use it as a display so yeah, they had some. They were really cheap, and they had like a rectangular one, I think it was. Small, small one. I saw this one. I don't know. Let's get one of them. It could be fun to play with. It could be fun to play with. Just go in my bin of LED stuff and never be touched again, which happens too. And I just realised I've got to talk about this thing, which came with those other cleaners. It's like a little needle. But it's got a flat on it. See that? So you can use that to basically make a hole bigger, clean that hole. As long as you want to tape it, of course. I'm not sure what I'd use that for, but it could be handy too. Bag inside a bag. I suppose they're trying to be thorough, but I'm not sure why it needs to be bagged. It's a bit of a hard life, isn't it? Alright. It's a bit oily. It's much of a range of motion, maybe it's enough. It's a bit oily because they do that to stop things from rusting. It's like a bit that goes on there, like that, is it? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, this is a crimper for IDC cables. So you have IDC connectors which you put on ribbons. You can use this to crimp them on. Many times I've actually had IDC cables to assemble, right? So various projects, a lot of the projects I do, I will use a little IDC type connector, which may just go into pin headers on a board or something like that. Or maybe it is actually a piece in itself. And I've always 
kind of bulged crimping those things together, you know, pair of pliers or grips or poly grips or something like that, or even <laughs> times I put it on the desk and smash it with a hammer, <laughs> depending on the size. I realised oh, I should probably get the right tool for the job, so I finally got a tool which is probably the right tool for the job. Um, yeah, nine and a half inch IDC crimping tool. Here's some demonstrations here. Look. So you're without adapter and with adapter. And this is the adapter. So without the adapter, it's got the plain like crimp surfaces. Right, like this. And you obviously put the fitting inside there and crimp the back of the fitting on. And with the adapter, you can do it the way around so the fitting's the other way up. Or something. I don't know. I yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'll find out we got to use it. But yeah, I've been meaning to get a crimper for a long time and hopefully this does a job. It should do, as long as I crimp two things together. So there's how that adapter piece goes in there like that, it sort of slides in that way. A tool I'll use maybe once or twice a year, but now I've got one. Alright, this is a box from Mauser. So I think this is some repair parts. I'm not sure. It is. It's in resistors. So I know people love capacitor videos. I've decided to start doing resistor videos instead. No, seriously. So this is one watt 400k resistors, 0.1%. Metal films. There's 40 of those in here. So the main thing I needed was 400k, which is a hard thing to get. One watt and 0.1%. They need to be quite accurate values. Because these are to repair a piece of test gear which I picked up, which has some bad resistors in it. I had to get 400k, because I can use 400k in three different configurations. I can get 400, 800 by putting them in series, and 200 by putting them in parallel. This is the reasoning behind that. 400k. Means I can finish doing that repair and make that video, which you guys will all get to see, eventually. Did I get it right? Yes, I did. Thank you from someone. Ah, excellent. So this arrived very quickly. That's good. I ordered this last week. Let's have a look at it. It's a MacBook logic board. Now, I actually have a MacBook Retina. Uh, is it 2012, is it? I was trying to repair it. I couldn't get the thing working. And I think it's just too far gone. I just could not fix it. I've had the thing for a few years now. I've been tinkering with it even once in a while and I get bored and just trying to get the thing to work. And I had no luck. So I thought, well, okay, this isn't getting anywhere. Let's just buy a replacement board of AliExpress. So this cost me, I think it's about $180 or something like that. Hopefully it's a okay board. You never quite know. I mean, it could be a minor repair which has been done to it. You don't know what you're going to get. But another one I've got currently is completely fried. I just can't get the thing to work at all. So I'm hoping that, you know, having a replacement board like this is okay. It's got a liquid damage indicator here which hasn't been triggered. Is that original? Who knows? There's some residue over here in that area that's Wi-Fi so there's some residue around here so maybe the Wi-Fi got hit the one I've got which I haven't been able to fix that had liquid damage on it and it caused a bit of a problem across the, a lot of parts of the board but there was liquid around this area which affected the um, capacitors and stuff around this section I'm hoping this board's not too bad but the fact they got some residue over here maybe it had some issues in this area and they fixed it maybe it's a Wi-Fi which is bad and unplugged it and it worked I don't know it's supposed to be a 2.7 gigahertz 16 gig memory i7. Hopefully it's okay. I'll have to have a close look at this and see if it actually looks right or not. I'll come back. There's also some liquid indicators here. There's one here, another one over there. But I will be very surprised if they're factory. It could well be aftermarket ones which have been stuck on there to make it look better. That sort of stuff happens because you can buy the things. Well, from a visual inspection without using a microscope, it all looks fine. Connectors and stuff look fine, like the fan connectors aren't broken and that sort of thing. So, I mean, it's sold as a working board with a warranty on it. So, I guess the only way to find out is transplant it and find out. Click subscribe and like. Hope you enjoyed the massive mailbag. Try and catch up. And I'll catch you later. Bye.